Wait, South Park released another special on Paramount Plus? Well, time to activate another free trial. So after watching this special, I definitely have some thoughts on it. I really enjoyed this special as a whole, and it gave me a ton of reasons to enjoy it. From the absolute absurdity of the things that Cartman does, to the extremely extensive allegory for streaming services, and some appearances from some less popular characters, this new special found plenty of ways to impress me, and in what seems to be becoming a pattern, it has left me very excited for the next special. There was even one aspect of the special that I was genuinely amazed by, and we'll get there. So, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. South Park The Streaming Wars Blew My Mind But before we get started, I want to say thanks to today's sponsor, no one. There is no sponsor. But I actually do want to shout out my boy Johnny Two Cellos, who can pump out these reviews at record speeds, and I'm sure this video will end up being pretty similar to his, so go check out his too. Also go check out his new video on South Park's most heartwarming moments, it's a fantastic video, I highly recommend it. So this special mostly focuses around the drought in Colorado, as many people and businesses no longer have access to the water that they need. A big part of this is thanks to the very essential agriculture being done over at Tegrity Farms, but it's mostly due to Man Bear Pig. If you don't know what Man Bear Pig is, it's basically how the show personifies global warming. He's been around since season 10 and has maintained his place as an allegory for climate change ever since. We also get a callback to another old episode with Pee Pee, the owner of a water park. We first see him in the incredibly gross yet enjoyable episode Pee. All of this is to set up for the main plot of this episode, where the farmers learn that they can take any excess water that they don't use and sell it to other people. Most importantly, they have to prove that their water is making it to the reservoir. Token's dad is the first to take advantage of this and dubs the system We're about to start our very own streaming service. That's right, in case you haven't figured it out yet, this is all a big metaphor for movie and television streaming services like Netflix, HBO Max, Paramount Plus, and the million others that exist now. I don't want to go too in depth into the subtext and the messages you gotta dig for, so I'll summarize the basic messages behind this plot. More and more people begin to get in on the streaming service craze, creating their own streaming services, but as the market becomes more saturated, the big time companies that have more money begin to buy up more and more areas to make their streaming services even larger, and eventually end up overtaking the smaller services. Meanwhile, Stan and Token are kind of stuck in the middle, as they're the ones that are creating the boats that are necessary for each streaming service to prove they're making it to the reservoir. They start with Credigree Farms, and then Tegrity Farms, and are finally offered an insane amount of money to create the boats for Custler Industries. Again, I don't want to go too in depth into the background behind this, so I'll give a quick summary. Also again, Johnny goes far more in depth into this in his video, so once again go check that out. Basically, Randy is HBO Max, and Stan and Token are Matt and Trey, the creators of South Park. In 2019, they signed a huge deal with HBO Max for exclusive rights to the show. Then in 2021, they signed an even huger deal with Paramount Plus that basically used a loophole to get around the deal that they made with HBO Max. The deal with HBO included rights to the episodes that air on Comedy Central, so to get around this, the new contract included 14 quote, made-for-TV movies that would be exclusive to Paramount Plus and not air on Comedy Central. The show's entire catalog would also move to Paramount Plus when the HBO contract expires. So Randy, representing HBO, is not happy about this new deal. At the center of all this are Stan and Token, aka Matt and Trey, who are accepting these deals because of the insane amounts of money that they will be making. Is everyone still following? Okay, good. This leads us to our look into the minds of Matt and Trey, as the boys begin to question whether they're taking on too much responsibility in these deals. Dude, I'm starting to think we took on too much. It's okay. It's not okay. Obviously, Matt and Trey are questioning the same thing when it comes to South Park. The amount of content that they're producing in such a small amount of time is probably the most they've ever done, as they made two hour-long specials at the end of last year, then made six regular episodes in six weeks, and now are making two more hour-long specials in what will probably end up being two months. We also get to see the worries of the creators as they begin to question whether they can keep up the same quality while having such a vigorous schedule. We see this through the quotes from Randy and the kids. Cartman, come on, that looks like shit. Come on what, Cal? But look, I, I know we're making a lot of these, but we still have to make them look nice. Does it really matter? Yes, it matters. The streaming services are paying for nice boats. 
we're going to march right over to where this guy lives and tell him that you can't possibly take on another streaming service without sacrificing the quality of your product. Now to try to skip past a lot of stuff that was mostly set up for the next part, it comes out eventually that PP, the water park owner, was behind everything the entire time as he essentially does what he can to monopolize the streaming services and take out any of the competition. He was even in cahoots with Man Bear Pig, a pretty clear commentary on how many businesses don't work to prevent climate change since they actually benefit from it in many ways. The entire streaming service plot ends with a cliffhanger where we begin to see PP's plan materialize as he begins to take out his competition with the help of Man Bear Pig. All around, I thought this plot was really interesting. I like how deep and meta they tried to get with it. Throughout the years, they've become known for making these meta plot lines, and that has been met with varying degrees of success, but I think in this special, they did it really well, and I'm really excited for the next part. And despite how good this plot line is, I haven't even gotten to talk about the absolute insanity that is the Cartman plot line. Mad? So in case you missed out on season 25, Cartman lives in a hot dog stand now since his mother doesn't want to work and is incredibly depressed about it. He hates living in the hot dog so much that he's willing to do anything to get out of it. Did I say that his mother doesn't want to work because what I meant to say is that he forced his mom to stop working and take care of him. Also did I say that he's willing to do anything to get out of it because what I meant to say is that he's willing to make his mother do anything to get out of it. Besides work of course. When he sees the rich owner of the new streaming services move in across the street, he gets excited and comes up with an ingenious idea. His absolutely foolproof plan is to get his mother breast implants so that the rich dude moving in across the street will marry her and take them in. Yes, that is really the full extent of his plan. He manages to convince the rest of the boys to help pay for it by wording the situation extremely vaguely. Okay, I just... I need to try and raise some money because... My mom needs to have a surgery, and we can't afford it. Oh, dude. And whether it be that the rest of the boys are just too kind-hearted, or they somehow forgot that they're talking to Eric Cartman, they end up buying into it. However, a wrench is thrown into his plans, as for the first time, maybe ever, his mother is not putting up with these antics, and she straight up says no. As she continually refuses, he tries to get more and more manipulative, going as far as to say that if she doesn't get them, then he will. She surprisingly doesn't budge, no matter how much Cartman claims that he will do it. And eventually, out of pure stubbornness, Cartman goes through with it and ends up with a cartoonishly large breast augmentation. I'm sorry, but this is genuinely one of the funniest images in the show's history. Like, it's just so absurd, I cannot look at it without laughing. It just cracks me up every time. These are real fake tits! Kenny, feel him! Go on, feel him! What the fuck is real, dude? What? This is really where the Cartman plot ends, though. As I said, they're basically setting up for the next episode, and I guess we'll find out what they, I mean, he does in the next part. And while we've gotten through the two main storylines in the episode, we actually have yet to talk about my favorite part of this entire episode. This special has so many absolutely beautiful shots throughout it. I pointed out in the post-COVID specials how they seem to have upped their animation game, but this special takes it to another level. I mean, look at the water in all of these scenes. Look at these aerial shots that are clearly animated using the same 3D style from the intros. Even the smaller things, like this scene with the boats riding down the streams, and how they make some scenes look even more cinematic by focusing on a subject and blurring everything else. It's all around, this special just looks incredibly cinematic and it's so cool to see the extra effort being put into the animation. It's also kind of funny to see this depth being put into certain areas while meanwhile, the characters' models are still basically the same construction paper cutouts they've been for 25 years, but it makes for a visual experience that's pretty unique to South Park. So as I play some more of my favorite of the pretty animation clips, I'll go ahead and summarize my feelings regarding the special. All around, it was really good, and I am looking forward to the next part a lot. Well, I, I guess that's it. I mean, I don't really have anything else to say. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention how insane it is that they played the song WAP by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion during the whole, like, water scenes, all the scenes involving water. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty funny. 
Well, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs>